Hello people, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, we'll be seeing a new topic or new branch of machine learning that is the active learning. So active learning is basically a subset of machine learning uh, where we use certain concepts from uh, machine learning in order to solve uh, real time problems, especially in medical applications or in other domains. So uh, before understanding the technical uh, things of active learning, let's uh, understand with the help of an example so uh, say for example uh, you have a disease certain type of disease and you don't know what is it so uh, you basically go to a doctor and uh, you just uh, don't speak to him so you will just sit like something like this so uh, then uh, it becomes difficult for the doctor as well to understand like what is your disease actually is so what he basically does is he'll uh, ask certain types of uh, questions whether you have uh, uh, pain on this area or you have some kind of uh, other irritations or something like that. So what he basically does is he's asking query. So active learning is essentially also called as query learning uh, where you ask certain uh, queries or relevant queries in order to extract that particular kind of information. So uh, it's basically focused on the region of interest. So uh, say you have a large area and you may be interested only in this portion of this large area. So this is basically your region of interest ROI. And this is also sometimes called as optimal experimental design. Now this term is mostly used in statistics so there you encounter uh, this word that is optimal experimental design that means active learning so as i told you active learning is just a branch of or moreover like a subset of uh, machine learning so uh, there is a key hypothesis in this so the hypothesis which is followed in active learning is that the learning algorithm that is a machine learning algorithm which you are implementing has the liberty to choose the data to learn from. So, so far uh, in the other type of learning that is supervised and unsupervised learning, what we did is uh, we had a large kind of data set and we just randomly assigned different instances and different data uh, in order to make the learning algorithm to learn. So it was kind of like brute force approach uh, where you didn't had any particular uh, path in order to estimate the model. And so it took some uh, surplus amount of time in order to uh, detect like uh, what are actually the model is going to learn so active learning uh, just is like a shortcut to this where you impose certain kind of queries in order to extract relevant information so it does follows this key hypothesis where in each of the instances you will choose the data specific to your learning algorithm and then you construct your model so in real world you have uh, two kinds of data that is unlabeled data which is more easy to get and uh, there is labeled data which is more difficult to get say uh, in medical application you have uh, different types of diseases classified under different taxonomies so you have a certain list or a certain template for that. So if a new patient comes in and if he has certain uh, characteristics from that disease, then he get easily uh, classified from that. So there it becomes easier for you to categorize. Okay, this person has got this disease and supposedly tomorrow if a new person comes and if he has some other kind of disease, which has completely different characteristics from the list or the template, which I've already had. So uh, there you need to have this kind of active learning or query based learning because then you would be extracting that relevant information which were not there earlier so that would just refine or leverage 
your existing training set then you construct a model in order to uh, learn this type of new disease or uh, whatever kind of information it is now uh, this active learning is basically uh, having a block diagram uh, where you have certain entities uh, and other actors involved so i'll just uh, quickly model this so you have this your machine learning algorithm and then what you have is you have an actor so this is basically called as an oracle now what is an oracle it is a human annotator so in order to understand this uh, say for example you have a wasteland where you throw certain garbage so like it will be filled with different kinds of uh, garbages belonging to different categories and if you uh, ask one person like just label what kind of uh, waste it is so that is x1 x2 x3 so he'll just put different names to it so that will take some time so those can be done only by a, a human being so that you basically call as an oracle now what it does is he'll pick up the data from this u that is unlabeled pool so he'll basically query this and he'll just update it to his labeled instances so this is the training set so here you learn model and here you select certain instances based on query so uh, this is uh, how your active learning system looks like so uh, whenever you take an unlabeled pool obviously this is of very large size but your uh, actual training set would be uh, lesser than this so this size is very small as compared to this so here from a large portion you will try to extract only for a small amount so this small amount refers to your uh, training set so in each iteration whenever you get new information what you basically does is you try to refine this or leverage your uh, training set now this type of block diagram which i have drawn here where i have considered a pool is called as pool based active learning now uh, in order to evaluate uh, the performance metrics of uh, active learning you basically do one kind of sampling technique so that is basically called as uncertainty based sampling so in other machine learning algorithms uh, we saw different kinds of techniques like random sampling bootstrapping then cross validation so that one kind of uh, sampling technique is followed in uh, active learning as well and so when you take the baseline as compared to the other machine learning algorithm this uncertainty based sampling performs much better as compared to different other techniques which we have uh, in the existing uh, world so uh, there this active learning comes into picture and you can uh, see like how important it is to have a query based learning system in order to extract certain information than to do an exhaustive search now i have spoken regarding the select query so uh, we have three types of different strategies in select query so where we can apply different settings in order to extract this so that i'll uh, explain in some other video so well this was all regarding a quick introduction regarding the active learning in machine learning so hope you guys enjoyed this video found regarding educate watching this video please do like share comment and if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing thank you very much for watching this video